welcome back to my youtube channel cloud and ai analytics hope everyone is doing good i am viknesh and in this video i am going to explain you one of the most important service in google cloud called cloud composer so this video it is going to be a practical hands on where we will be building an etl pipeline using cloud data flow when i say etl pipeline we are going to read data from cloud storage process it through cloud data flow basically through apache beam and load it into bigquery and this entire ET, etl pipeline it is orchestrated with the help of cloud composer so we are going to write a separate script for building an etl pipeline that is in apache beam python sdk and the next one is we are going to write a airflow script to orchestrate this pipeline so we will see what is that in this practical demo and without any further delay let's get started so the first thing is you have to create a composer environment so basically to create a composer environment it will take around 20 to 25 minutes to create a composer environment in google cloud i have already created it but i'll show you whatever i did for while i'm creating the cluster or composer environment so first click on this create i'm using composer 1 for this particular demo here you can see composer version is 1.20.8 and airflow version is 2.4.3 so basically the difference between composer 1 and composer 2 is composer 1 it there will be no auto scaling and it supports both airflow 1 and airflow 2 whereas composer 2 is auto scaling and it supports only airflow, airflow 2 so i'll just click on this composer 1 and you can enter your composer environment name you can just enter your composer environment name the location what is the image version you can uh, for example i'll just add this composer 002 and location let it be asia is to an image version let it be 1.21 and airflow 2 whatever the requirement like i'm going with this one so the node count is 3 basically i'll explain you in the next video uh, what is the architecture of cloud composer what is airflow i'll be explaining you those things in my next video very detailedly but we'll just go with the setup for this particular day lab so you can just click on all those things let it be default and when you just click on this grid it will take around 20 to 25 minutes to create this particular composer environment the moment i enter into my composer environment you can see the monitoring tool all the monitoring tools you will be able i have already uh, like i have already ran my, like few envir few runs also here you can see all the details here what is the failed task what is the failed diagram what is the successful diagram and what is the environment every for now everything is in the lt the logs all the log details you can find it from here the dax environment so this is where we are going to upload our airflow script and environment configuration here you can see name location service account google api scopes image version python version dax folder airflow web ui logging so all the default things whatever we configure you will be able to see it here and the next thing is airflow configuration overage environment variables labels and pi packages so if you wanted to install any python packages you will be able to install it here and it will be applicable throughout the composer environment itself so you if you wanted to navigate your airflow ui you can just click on this and you will be able to see a screen like this and the next thing is dag folder this is where inside this dag folder this is where we will be uploading our script file and we will be uploading our uh, uh, main file as well for example i'll show you the code now so this code or uh, you can see here right i'll just unhide uh, it so here you can see this is the two script files and i'll show you the um, demo as well so this is the airflow script which we are going to upload inside dag folder so inside this DAG folder, we are going to upload this particular uh, piece of code. This is what the Airflow code, which is written in Python. So we are importing the packages. We are installing, we are calling the default arguments and we are import, like we are defining the DAG variables. What is the DAG ID? What is the default arguments? Here you can see Airflow, retries, retry, delay, data flow options. Like what is the project ID? What is the region and what is the runner? Data flow runner, since we are running it in Google Cloud itself and we are going to schedule it daily whatever the default arguments and the start date is whatever like day before yesterday it will just like just yesterday what it is what the yesterday date is catch up is called and the description the first one is dummy operator 
then second one is data flow operator like data flow python operator so this is where we will be calling our python script well so basically i have placed this python script well data flow script underscore titanic dot pv so this is the main script file which i have placed inside this particular uh, demo so here you can see i just came out of this composer bucket so this is my composer bucket under dark folder inside this is if you wanted i can go inside this dark folder this is where i'll be keeping my airflow script which has basically the dark concept inside it so here i have uploaded this data flow script titanic and this is my csv file so basically which is in present inside csv file which is present inside the cloud storage bucket so i am importing the packages and i am writing that this is my target table like final target table project id data set id and finally the table name so if i open my bigquery so i'll make sure that the yeah the data set is present my first data set so this data set is present but this table is going to create at the runtime so i am going to get the input argument alone from the airflow script file so if you see inside airflow script file i am passing the input file input as an option here so this input whatever the titanic data set this will be passed as an input to the script file data flow titanic script titanic so here it takes one argument that is input and we are going to create the pipeline arguments here like beam concepts like pipeline p collections those things and we are i am writing a, a function which removes colon like it will remove the colon and it will just print the row as well and this is where the clean the data is i am going to do a very minimal transformation first i am reading the text um, from the cloud storage that is the csv file i am just ignoring the header line so here you can see i am just ignoring this first line i am going to ignore it and then i am calling this function remove underscore lost column and i am making all those things to lower everything is converted into lower whatever the cap caps letter or camel case everything is converted into lower case and then i am doing one filter option which is going to filter on first column so what is my first column here you can see passenger id is my sorry passenger id is my first column that is zero servoid is my second column that is one pcal is my third column that is two so servoid i am going to filter on who all actually servoid that is the filter i am going to do and i am going to add a new column called a uh, new value called titanic servoid so this is what everything it is stored inside this clean the data basically clean the data is a p collection here the next thing is i am going to take this clean the data and i am creating one more p collection called servoid data so this is where i am going to filter so if it is 3 it means fourth column so passenger id servoid 2 p class 2 sex is like i am going to fem uh, do a filter with female so i just wanted to load a data to my bigquery where i want how many passengers got servoid and out of that i am going to do a filter who's female like what are the females and just going to add that to my bigquery ta target table so servoid data like what is the count delivered what is the delivered map and print delivered column and then we are loading it into bigquery so bigquery client uh, first thing is it is going to get the data set obviously the data set is present inside my bigquery i showed you before if that data set is not present it will going to it will basically create the data set that's it it will create the data set and it everything will be converted into json from csv it is converted into json and then finally we are writing it into bigquery so write delivered write to bigquery deliver table specification the first thing is our project id data set id and followed by table name and table schema so everything this is a table schema passenger id string server string and it is going to create if the table is not present and it is going to write append so whenever i am uploading like running it the next time second time second day third day fourth day basically i am going to schedule it right like daily so whenever it is running for the next day it is going to just add the data to that particular table that's it it is not going to overwrite or it is not going to upset and all this just going to append the data and finally the option like finally our script file is done so what i did this i uploaded this titanic data set dot csv and data flow script underscore titanic dot py inside my cloud storage bucket so here you can see inside my cloud storage bucket i have uploaded them here those two files i have uploaded like data flow now the main script file so if you see this is my airflow script so this is the uh, dag script file so here you can see the dag object is present 
so i'm going to go inside this dag folder just click on this upload files and i'm going to upload this airflow script.py so this is my main file so once it got refreshed i guess we'll be able to see the file yeah the file is there airflow script.py when it got uploaded all those details you will be able to see it here so the next thing is i'll just close this and i'll just close this as well so i'm going to refresh i'm inside my compose environment i'm going to refresh this so i'll just click on this open airflow ui so this is where you will be able to see the airflow actual airflow ui so here you can see airflow ui dax data sets browse admin docs so i'll be explaining you each and every concept like what when can we use this admin variables configuration those things everything i'll be i'll be explaining you in the upcoming videos uh, this airflow monitoring it is the default one which is present inside composer and it is maintained by google cloud itself to check the healthy environment to check the health of the run composer environment so it will basically take one or two minutes to reflect whatever the script file which we uploaded inside the dag folder right under cloud storage it will take one or two minutes to get reflected so you can refresh here or else you can go inside this environment and you will be able to refresh here as well so you have to just refresh and you have to um, wait for one or two minutes so basically if there is any error you will be able to see that error message here as well as you will be able to see that error message here also so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close this and i'm going to my composer environment i'll just refresh here and just refresh here once again and i'll just click on this airflow ui so you can click on here as well and you can go inside this composer environment you can just click open airflow ui dag folder this is where we will be uploading our main script file uh, data flow uh, apache beam script file as well as airflow script file airflow script file which has a dag object it should go under dags folder or else it will cause us an issue so if you want you will be able to see everything here we'll see here yeah now the titanic exp is there so here you can see this is my dag id titanic exp and it is scheduled daily so now i am going inside this titanic exp and here you can see start task id python task data flow and end task id so here you can see like dag it follows dag concept like dag is directed acyclic graph so it depend like once after completing this stage it will go into this stage and then it will finally go into this stage so in my next video or in my upcoming video i'll explain you what is dag what is directed acyclic graph so even if the step fails or passes it will move into the next step and ultimately if the entire pipeline is successful you will be able to see the success or else you will be able to see the failure so now you can just click on this manual like if you wanted to run it manually you can just click on this trigger dag so when you are doing it for the very first time uh, by default it will run but i am running it for the second time that is why i am i am triggering it for the next time manually because once it my actually the schedule interval which i did you no know, it is to run the script file once a day like daily it will run once at the particular time so if you wanted you can schedule the time interval as well so basically that time you can give it as like cron job you can give it as a cron job so uh, whatever the cron schedule right like the same thing you will be and it follows utc time if you wanted to change the utc time also you will be able to change that so this job you will be able to see it in data flow as well because ultimately it is going to use data flow runner right so you can just click on this go to data flow and you will be able to see the data flow runner which is currently running python task data flow so you can just click on this and sorry you can just click on this and you will be able to see the structure you will be able to see the outline so basically read from text remove last column and lambda the next thing is Uh, filtering passengers delivered to JSON, write delivered, count delivered, deliver whatever the JSON, whatever the P collection which we defined here, right? Everything you will be able to find it here. So the first thing is, it is going to read text. Uh, it is going to read all those things. You, if you want, you can just give a file like this, filtering messages, those things also you will be able to give it and read from text. The first thing is, 
read from text and the next thing is remove last column and then is map like everything it is converted into lower the fourth thing is like we are splitting the column basically we are going to do uh, filter on survived column where we are going to filter on who actually survived that titanic data and then finally we are filtering on the passages like this after titanic survey we are adding one value titanic survey and then we are splitting female passenger filtering on female passages from here we are doing two things one is this survey data right this survey data we are taking this survey data into two things one is we are going to this what is the count what is the count of this data those things you are will be able to see it here and the same survey data that same survey, same survey data p collection we are taking it here and we are do, converting that csv file to json object and writing that json object to bigquery this is what we are doing it here to convert json we are taking that csv thing and we are splitting with comma separated file like basically csv is comma separated file we are splitting that with comma and we are assigning that values to this particular and here the table schema is passenger id string everything is a string i have given everything to a string and then we are calling this to json method here beam dot map to json beam dot io dot write to bigquery this is what the delivered table space you can see this project line number eight uh, schema table schema create deposition and write deposition so here you can see the job is currently in the running state and here you can see what is the job name what is the job id what is the top time basically we are doing the batch processing job status it is running on apache beam python 3.8 sdk 2.4 and new version the job region worker location current worker latest worker status start time elapsed time encryption time data flow prime time runner version 2 data flow shuffle those things what is the current virtual cpu total virtual cpu time current memory total memory time current hdd pdd total hdd current ssd those details all those details you'll be able to see and this is what the pipeline options is like labels project region runner and the staging location so we are not providing any cloud storage bucket name so what it will do is it will create data uh, data flow staging buckets on its own during the runtime itself so in my next video or in my upcoming videos i'll make sure that how to pass or how to submit a data flow job using gcloud commands using python commands as well so i have already shown you how to run a, a data flow job using predefined templates if you have not uh, gone through that particular video i'll give that link of that video in this uh, description session you can take a look at it so here you can see that everything is done still it is right like the delivered it is also succeeded and now it is going to this count deliver delivered map all those things so we can go here and it took around we'll just refresh it here so it took around 4 minutes 9 seconds and obviously it will take like around 5 minutes to complete this entire job itself. So we will we will wait for it 4 minutes again. It is still in the running state and the same you can find it here as well. It is still in the running state and here you can see this is the grid state. We are in the grid. If you wanted you can see the graph as well. So start task ID is completed. Python task network it is which is currently running and end task ID the next step is. So here you can see deferred, failed, queued, removed, restarting, running, schedule, shutdown. These are the different task ID, task values. So if you go here, I have given retry one. If the job fails, it will retry for next time after 50 seconds. So basically if you give zero, you are not going to retry. If you give two, it is going to retry for two more times or two times. And then it is still in the running set and schedule daily. Next run is this and the calendar task duration i'll explain you those things in the upcoming videos and if you wanted you can just click on this code and you will be able to see the code here like import libraries all those things whatever i have explained you right this is the dag rco script you will be able to see the same here and the same logs also you will be able to find it from here you will be able to find it from the year or else you can go you can find it from this logs or you can the next thing is you can go here and you will be able to find the logs here or else you can go to cloud logging and you can filter that basically there as well like go to cloud logging you can go to logging and you will be able to filter records from here as well you have to just write a query and you will be able to like for example you can just click on this data flow step and instead of last four hour like last five minutes you will be able to see the log details here as well
so the job is done so here you can see i'll just close refresh it the job is done and here also which i have already we have seen this so here if you see we are reading that text and here you can see it is succeeded map it is also succeeded and yeah here you can see elements added is 891 44 44.38 uh, kb and this is where we are filtering it with passengers from a from 800 something we reduced it to 342 records when we do the filter and whatever the right delivered you will be able to see elements added is 233 after that there is some filter and we are adding 233 records to bigquery the same you can go inside this bigquery just refresh the console here you can see just refresh the content zones and you can just click on this survey data so this is the table name whatever the columns you have everything we have here details like when it got created those things you will be able to see a number of rows is 466 total logical bytes is 31 dot and you can preview the data as well what is the passenger all those things like here you can see we have only the survey and we have only the female passengers if you wanted to cross it you will be you can write a query and you can cross check that as well and the metadata is like this are the page passengers who actually survived the titanic so those things and if you wanted to write query you will be able to write the query as well count star yeah we'll be able to see and count star star that So here you can see female and the same you can go with this survey as well. So in this particular video, I have explained you how to write an ETL pipeline, how to write an ETL pipeline using cloud data flows, Apache Beam Python SDK, which is basically you are going to read data from cloud storage bucket as a batch processing. And then you are, you are going to do some transformations and finally you are going to write into cloud storage bucket we are going to write into not cloud storage bucket we are going to write into bigquery so you can just click you will be able to see what is the status run id run type run duration 5 minutes 36 seconds and you will be able to see all the other details here as well and the graph also you will be able to see that same so the etl pipeline is inside cloud data flow apache beam and the entire pipeline is orchestrated it is orchestrated with cloud composer and this is going to run daily this is going to run daily at utc time so here you can see owner retries retry delay it is going if the job fails for some reason it will retry for one minute one more time after 50 seconds and finally we are going to create a dummy operator and then submit the data flow uh, python operator and then the end operator basically we are going to end the end. this is what the dag is directed exactly graph so i hope you learned something new from this video i'll meet you on the next video with more interesting content and please do like comment share and subscribe to cloud and AI analytics if you have any questions please post that in the comment section i'll take a look at it and reply to it as soon as possible I'll meet you in the next video with more interesting contents from Google Cloud. Until then, it's bye from Vignesh and happy learning. Thank you.